How is portfolio management implemented in practice? People often start with a top-down approach. They may look at the economy, and then they'll decide on a particular segment of the market to concentrate on. They may focus on large cap stocks, mid cap stocks, small cap stocks. Then they might choose particular sectors within those size categories to focus on. They may overweight some sectors that they believe are undervalued and underweight other sectors that they believe are actually overvalued. With this in mind, let me talk about a study that I co-authored that looked at the best approach for actually doing portfolio allocations using basic valuation ratios. And one of the things that we focused on was how can you select undervalued and overvalued sectors? What ratios actually work best in practice? And we were using real-time data to do this. In other words, data available at that time. And another question we asked was, you know, why did this, why did these ratios actually work? Why do some work better than others? Well, the conclusion associated with this was that uh, you actually want to use that total enterprise value to EBITDA ratio. And the way that we got at this was by looking at a research methodology that, that used short positions in um, sectors with uh, poor fundamentals, long positions in sectors with attractive fundamentals. And we looked at a, this over a really long period of time, over 30 years. And again, that big conclusion was that if you uh, actually can do sector allocations and do a basic strategy based on the right valuation, you can beat the benchmark, at least on a historical basis, two thirds of the time and in each of the last three decades. So not only did this have a great track record, but this track record wasn't uh, just based on one particular time period. It worked before the Great Recession, after the Great Recession, through multiple decades, it was very consistent, which is a characteristic that you want to see in a strategy that's going to continue to work over time. The bottom line is the sector allocations using enterprise value to EBITDA were the ones that were the most profitable. So what I'd like to do is take a look at a spreadsheet that I've put together that actually can help you determine what sectors are most attractively valued or poorly valued right now. And I'm going to take a look at the S&P mid cap 400 index and the, uh, the sectors within that particular index. So what you can see is that in this Google Docs I've got right here, you've got historical data. And I'm going to highlight this historical data. It's got the calendar quarter four in 2016. Then it's got the first quarter in 2017. Um, it's got Q2 in 2017, all the way up to the second quarter of 2018. And it's got the most recent valuation data as well. So what have we got here? We have the enterprise value divided by the EBITDA for the index overall and for most of the sectors here. I've left out a couple of sectors, by the way. You're not going to see financials here because I think that financials are sort of a unique animal. Um, the other thing that I've left out is real estate because I feel like that it requires a little different approach for valuation as well. But you see the other sectors here, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, energy, healthcare, industrials, IT, materials, and even telecom services. So what are we talking about when we we're looking at this ratio? Remember that enterprise value is the sum of the market value of common stock plus the debt preferred stock. It also takes into account minority interest, which is a form of financing. And then it subtracts out cash and short-term investments. So this last bullet point here is actually subtracted. What you're trying to get at is the net acquisition cost of a particular company. And it compares that to the EBITDA, that earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. And you can think of this as the operating income before depreciation. This is a great comparison. So what you've got in the numerator is the cost of actually acquiring the company on a net basis. And you're comparing that to the cash flows that you would generally have if you own the whole organization. Now, this is not exactly precise in the sense that you still have to pay 
uh, taxes, um, you would still have to invest in fixed assets in order to replace those that depreciate. So it it's not a perfect measure of you know the cash that you can sustainably get out of the organization, but it's a good proxy for it. It's a good representation for it. What we would like to do is focus on those with a low value for this ratio. And the reason why that we would want a low value is because we would want to pay a low value for the company if we were going to acquire it, and that's in the numerator, and we would want to get lots of cash flows. And this operating income is basically our representation of cash flows, and that's in the denominator. So, you know, as an investor seek, seeking attractive assets, we'd want the numerator to be low, the denominator to be high, and so this overall ratio, we would prefer to be low. So, in trying to look at these particular sectors, remember our goal is, which ones are attractively valued? Which ones are unattractively valued? And we can see from this recent data that the numbers are all over, right? I mean, we prefer low numbers here. Some of them are high. Information technology um, has historically had a high enterprise value to EBITDA ratio and currently does. It's at 15.3 right now. Another one that is pretty high is healthcare. It actually has right now an enterprise value to EBITDA ratio of 14.6. Now, I find these numbers a little bit challenging to interpret. And let me give you a little better interpretation of it because people tend to think very effectively in terms of interest rates. So we can actually convert this to an interest rate if we would like. And the way that we can do that is just take one over the value of it. And so if I take this and divide it, basically take the reciprocal of it, what I get is 6.84%. So if you think about this as sort of a yield, that's a 6.8% return. Now it doesn't take into account a lot of things. For example, healthcare is a sector that probably has higher future growth than others. So this cash flow would actually grow over time and we'd be willing to pay a high multiple right now in order to have this actually grow in the future. What if we applied this to information technology, which is another area in which there's probably a lot of growth in the future. We're getting a 6.5%. Now, if we take this and apply it to energy, this looks really attractive, right? this low enterprise value to EBITDA ratio of 8.9 can be effectively thought of as a yield of about 11.2%. Hey, that's a great interest rate, right? I mean, that that's a good return. The problem is that to get that return, you're gonna suffer some ups and downs in the business cycle because energy is a very cyclical business. So what I'm trying to really get at here is you always have to take these with sort of a grain of salt because this is just one number. It's not taking into account everything. It's not taking into account growth opportunities, um, the riskiness of the business. But if we wanted to just look at these numbers, right, because we can, we can become overwhelmed with data. If we just wanted to look at this, which ones are relatively attractive? Well, um, I would say that this one is, is, you know, very relatively attractive. And so I would actually label this this green because energy looks cheap. It's got this low enterprise value to EBITDA ratio. This is another one that is actually quite cheap. So I'm going to label this green, sort of a go color. And uh, that's materials, which has an enterprise value to EBITDA ratio of 9.5. Now there's one that's even lower, which is telecommunication services. I would actually dismiss this one. And I want to explain why I would just sort of rule this out is because there are not many stocks in this sector within this index. So this doesn't really give you a good look at the companies within this sector. They're just, I, 
there are only a handful or less actually of, of companies in the mid cap space that are in this sector. So you've got this really low ratio. It looks attractive, but I, I just don't think that that's uh, fair to compare because it's just one particular company or a couple of just a couple of different companies. So what I want you to be able to do is just look at this and say, hey, which ones are cheap and which are expensive? And um, you know, right now, energy and materials look to be fairly attractive. So if you were a portfolio manager and you wanted to concentrate on sort of a, a green field, you know, what's a fertile field for finding undervalued stocks, you would probably want to focus on energy and information technology just based on this limited information. I'm going to color a couple of these red, and the reason why I would color these red is because this is information technology is fairly high. The other one that's fairly high right now is um, it's going to be healthcare as well. So those are my two picks for undervalued sectors, and those are my two picks for overvalued sectors. I would say that energy and materials, just based on this limited information, those are my picks for undervalued sectors right now, and my picks for overvalued sectors are healthcare and information technology. And again, you can look at this a million different ways, but what we found is that this particular ratio works really well over an extended period of time in finding the relative valuations of these sectors. Let, let me point out that you know, in a very subtle manner, we're using a particular approach. And that particular approach is we are saying this ratio is best applied by looking at the ratios, the current ratios for these sectors right now and comparing them to their current values. And that's why we're just focusing on uh, this column I by just comparing them against themselves right now. So there's another perspective that I want to share with you. Um, and it's, it, it's an equally valid approach in my opinion, but this is the answer that we get based on just looking at the valuations right now. Hope that's helpful. And again, I think that there's value in trying to identify undervalued and overvalued sectors. And what I'd like for you to do is try and apply this using current market data.